I'm Howard Tipton, Town of Longboat Key Town Manager. I'm relatively new, so this is my first talk of the town. So I am happy to introduce myself to you, and I look forward to working with you in the years ahead. Today with me is Isaac Brownman. He is our Public Works Director for the town. And what we'd like to talk about today are a couple of things. One is the red tide that we have recently experienced. Uh, it hasn't been as bad as it has been in years past, but if you're new to the town, uh, it can be a, a little bit of a, an adjustment. And so we want to talk a little bit about how the town reacts and when we react to that. And then next we want to talk about water conservation. Uh, as you can imagine, during the season, we have a lot more people on the island and the water use increases dramatically. It's uh, something that we want to keep an eye on, but at the same time we want to talk about what everybody can do uh, to be a part of the solution in, ter in terms of water conservation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Isaac and just ask him to talk a little bit about the town's uh, red tide experience and then w what it is that we do at a certain threshold for red tide impacts. Sure. Good afternoon, Howard. Thank you. Uh, red tide is something that our area has dealt with for generations, if not hundreds of years. It was even referred to many years ago by the indigenous folks of Florida and the Spanish explorers as this red substance in the water. Um, it rolls in from time to time. We can't really predict when it comes in, and it can vary from very intense to very minor. The fish kills and the dead sea life that can roll up on the beaches can be a small amount, a moderate amount, or even a very heavy amount. Um, so it's not a pleasant experience, um, but we do what we can to take care of the town and help clean up. Um, the material tends to be quite transient. So the town waits for several tide cycles, watches the weather, the wind, and the waves to see if the natural forces remove the material on their own before the town deploys. Deployment and cleanup of, town re of, the, of the red tide material by the town is very labor intensive and very challenging, and there's not a lot of good ways to do it, so we're very judicious about when we deploy for a red tide. Um, if there is a minor amount of material on the beach, and we do have thresholds as to what that looks like, uh, we'll wait some time to see if the natural forces remove it. Um, the good news is, is very recently, Manatee County has been helping us uh, by doing beach raking in the last several red tide cycles. And so basically to get the material off the beach, it takes basically a tractor and a beach rake, several workers, and then a dump truck because you have to remove the material to the landfill. Uh, what folks that live on the Gulf can do, and the DEP allows us, is you can actually bury the dead sea life material behind your property in the beach. Uh, we recommend two feet or more down so that the waves don't uh, wash it back up, but actually can be buried by property owners on the beach as well. All right, well, I appreciate that feedback. I know there were uh, a lot of folks, again, who, who may be new to the island, who have had this experience now for the first time. Again, it was on the mild side. Yes. It can be a lot stronger, but anytime you see the marine life impacted like that, it can be concerning. So I appreciate that update. Thank you. Yeah, and, and there's, there's one more uh, a common misconception that we hear a lot is uh, people identify the respiratory effects of red tide with the dead fish. It's really not the dead sea life. Uh, it's this natural material called Carinia brevis is what the red tide organism is. When the waves crash, that material ends up in the air, and that's what's actually causing the respiratory issues, not the actual dead fish. Yeah, and in terms of what our residents can do, is I, I think is, it, as you start to cough or, or have some of those symptoms, you kind of have to gauge yourself as to what you can tolerate. Exactly. Uh, it's it's you know it, it can be a, a day on the beach with a with a mild you know cough uh, and irritation, or it may be strong enough where you want to pull back and maybe do something inside. That's exactly right. And so right. I think it's up to the individual as to how they want to respond to it. Yes, that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, great. I appreciate the update on that. Sure. Let's let's talk a little bit about. Uh, we have all these wonderful visitors that come to uh, Longboat Key here in the uh, winter and spring, and uh, they do a number of things, include use a lot more water. Yes. And so, how does that impact our systems? So, thank you for asking, Howard. Um, most years during peak season, we see a lot of water usage, but it's fairly. Uh, nominal, it's, it's fairly expected. This particular season, because of the impacts due to Hurricane Ian down south, and because we are having a banner year, we're seeing a lot of heavy water usage. And what that does is it makes it a little more difficult for us to maintain the 
pressures on the island that need to be maintained in order to provide proper fire flow and proper pressure to facilities. Um, the town currently has an irrigation and watering restriction per town code of one day a week per, depending on your address. So really there's a one day a week uh, watering allowance in the town. Um, irrigation has been happening a lot more than one day a week, but it hasn't been an issue till this particular year. So we're asking folks to, to back down the irrigation, which is the primary source of this. We're having a very dry year. And of course, Longboat Key is a beautiful place and everybody wants to keep their landscape uh, nice and moist and not drying up. So we are asking folks though to please adhere to the town's code related to uh, water use on the irrigation side. Now, one of the things that drives you nuts is as you're driving down the road and somebody's uh, sprinklers are on and there's one that's broken and you have yes. this fountain coming up in the yard, most of it going into the street and draining away from its intended use. Yes. Um, so I think it's important to remind folks that not only do you want to regulate that for one day a week, but you need to get around and check your sprinklers as well. That's exactly right. And on Longboat Key, we found that word gets around very quickly and those do get repaired very fast and neighbors will talk to each other and say, hey, you need to fix your sprinkler system. That's great. And as a reminder, we have, uh, we get our water from Manatee County. Yes. We have three storage tanks on the island. So uh, south, central, and north. And so as we, as we think about our, our water system, I want to make sure everybody understands that we have, we have water. We're able to, to keep those tanks where they need to be. But it is everybody working together to make sure that we have that sufficient flow and, and pressure. That's exactly right. It takes everybody. And during these peak times, we want everybody to come and have a great time, enjoy themselves, but help us maintain the system at the same time. All right. So we want the grass to be green, but let's try to do it one day a week and make sure you're checking your, your uh, sprinklers for us, would you? Thank you. So with that, I think we will wrap up the talk of the town. Uh, again, appreciate the opportunity to be with you today, to have Isaac share his uh, expertise on both Red Tide and, and our uh, water system. And uh, until next time, take care.